our service. It's the sixth Sunday of Easter, um, and we're still meeting in isolation. And it doesn't look like uh, things are going to change anytime soon, and so this is our reality, and we have to move forward the best that we can. I think uh, one of the things that I miss the most is the, the singing, uh, coming to church on a uh, uh, Sunday morning and having choir for 40, 45 minutes, and then coming and singing in here. And uh, singing is a really important aspect of our spiritual lives, and uh, most of us haven't been able to do it or don't do it at the same rate that we did before. Uh, another thing I, I miss is the community that we have here at St. Mark's, and uh, this is quite a uh, close congregation, and uh, we, we are missing each other. And even though we send emails and send this out to people, it's not the same as gathering together. Um, we hope and pray for a, a speedy uh, end to this. Uh, it doesn't look like anything is happening soon. We move forward. Gospel reading. 
have today is from John chapter 14, and we're going to sing Emmanuel three times as our gospel acclamation. at St. Mark's. The uh, reason that we repeat them is so that uh, these songs uh, become embedded in our hearts and in our souls, and during the week we continue to sing them. And this is an awesome one. God is with us, revealed in us, and the steadfast love of the Lord is another one that if it's uh, resounding in your heart for the rest of the week, then so be it. The Gospel of John 14, 15 to 21. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and, you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. I, in a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal them myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, we ask that you would be with us as we are gathered in your name and bless both the preaching and the hearing of your word. Amen. Amen. Gospel reading. It's a little bit confusing to me and it might be to you also. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And at the end of the gospel, he said, uh, they who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. This is not the gospel. Even though it's a part of the gospel reading, it's not the gospel. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that's the way it's uh, always been in the Christian church. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a mixed message. And uh, we've uh, structured a lot of our rules and regulations upon this. And it's very clear that God has uh, uh, laid out all of these commandments, hundreds of commandments throughout the Bible. And uh, it is uh, the commandment that we obey these and we will be a part of the community of God. 
If you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. And uh, let's uh, explore why it isn't so easy. And it's the same in our relationships with other people. Uh, we have expectations and hopes and dreams in marriages. And when these aren't met, we believe, we come to the conclusion that the other person does not love us. For certainly, if they loved us, they would keep our commandments. They would do what we expect them to do. They would live the lives we expect them to live. The same with our children. We have the same expectations. And when they're not met, we come to the conclusion that there is not love in this relationship. That is the wrong conclusion. There are lots of reasons uh, why we are unable to keep the commandments that are in the Bible. And uh, one of the biggest reasons is, is from our own childhoods. If we did not experience love in our primary families as children, if we did not experience love from one or both of our parents, it has damaged our hearts and damaged us on the inside. And when, uh, when we preach about love and unconditional love, many people, many people have no understanding of what you're talking about because they never experienced it in the home. If you never experienced this unconditional love, if uh, one parent was always angry, yelling, screaming, and holding on to their anger for, for days and weeks, it is hard for us to comprehend that love. And when there was no love in our hearts when we were growing up, or there was a strong, mixed message from our parents, if our parents said that they loved us and then yelled and screamed at us and were angry with us, that is a mixed message that creates great confusion within us. We carry these hurts in our heart, and we can carry them for a long time. And when we are in our adult life and we are struggling in our adult life and we can't keep the commandments that God has given us, if we cannot live the lives that we expect of ourselves and others expect of us, if we cannot live the lives that we believe God expects of us, we feel that we are total failures and we despair and we can often slide into a depression. We need to heal what's going on in our hearts. The pain, the sadness, and the hurt that we've carried for many years in our hearts, um, the disappointment that we carry from our parents, we carry in our hearts. And if we do not allow God to heal that hurt and that pain, that's when we are also unable to live the lives that God wants us to live, and that we ourselves want to live. The root cause to addiction is what's going on in our hearts and the ambiguity that runs in our hearts. And we want to quit our addiction so badly, and we don't realize that the root is right here in our hearts. But there's also gospel in the gospel reading. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphan. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me because I live, you also will live. Because I live, you also will live. And I will not leave you orphan. That's the gospel reading. And even though the Bible is filled with this uh, mixed message, the truth is, that when we have our failures, when we cannot keep the commandments that God has given to us, uh, that does not mean we have to uh, kick people out of the congregation and break our relationships with people. It means that we stay together because God's promise that he will not leave us orphan. He will be with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And he will always love us and accept us despite the failings that we have in our life. And in our relationships with our children, in our relationships with our spouses, it is the true gospel that must hold us together. 
And that true gospel is forgiveness, understanding, and compassion. It's not always expecting that people will be who we want them to be and always being disappointed when they are not able to be that person. It's forgiveness, understanding, and compassion. This is what God has for us. This is how we stay in our relationships. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the na nations justly, show mercy to the oppressed, and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. 
We pray for those who suffer in many different ways, especially those that are sick and hospitalized and those who are hurting at this time. Braden, Gordon, Arnold, Connie, Lori, Dave, Darlin, Amanda, and Glenn. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, you remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with his favor and give us his peace. Amen.